Hello, welcome back to MacBreak Studio. We're looking at motion and lights. Yeah, and just this is all motion this time. All, all motion, motion, all, all motion. the time, yeah. no yeah, final yeah. cut. Just not today, not today. There's been I've seen a lot of people ask questions about how lights work in motion. And while we have a, an in-depth tutorial about working with a camera and working in 3D space, yeah. we don't talk a lot about the different light types. So I just wanted to spend uh, a few minutes walking through the different light types and how they're different and why you might want to use them. Like a so spot versus a flood or whatever. Exactly, okay. so let's just take a look. Mm -hmm. So here I have a scene that looks a little strange to start with and I'll show you why. Um, I have some text on a background and what I'm going to do is go to the perspective view so that we can take a quick look at this. Um, I just have, you can see the camera right there, and I have this Is there any way to make the lights. background other than white? Because you have a yeah, light. I will. Okay. I, I will in just a minute. You'll see where I'm going okay. with this. So um, just mm -hmm. hang with me for a minute with this. So I just want you to see it's a word light, so it just seems this random white background. I know it looks a little odd. I'm going to press Control A to go back to the active camera. And um, I have these lights, this, this text that says lights, that I'm going to make 3D, okay? And I have it 2D. 2D at first, I'll show you why in a minute, but if I turn on 3D, uh, then we'll get a better sense that we have this word that says lights in 3D, and I've styled it with some wood bevel and some red nice plastic red plastic inside, or car mm. paint actually yeah, inside. Your um, favorite go-to surface. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, the funky thing is, um, I want to explain the light types, but 3D text has its own lighting, and I want to get rid of all that so we can focus on what Motion's built-in lights right. do. So what I'm going to do here in the inspector for the 3D text is I'm in the lighting section, I'm going to change the lighting style to off, and we can still see the text because there's an environment around it. So I'm going to uncheck the environment as well. It's going to go dark. It's going to, yeah. So yeah, now the light's now totally, totally black, dark. totally black. So the white background's still bugging me though. Well, just a minute. Under the object menu, I'm going to choose to add a new light. Okay. Okay. Uh, so uh. when you add a new light, you can see in the heads up display that the light type is point. And there's these four types, and I want to walk over what these are. So the default is a point, but before we do anything with it, I'm going to go ahead and enable shadows so it will cast shadows. And so as soon as we do that, we see shadows now being cast. And I'm also going to increase the intensity to brighten things up. Yeah. Okay? Nice. So um, the other thing I'll do about shadows is increase the softness slider. So this, as the shadows get further away from the text, they get a little bit softer. You can only go up to a value, a softness value of 20 here in the heads up display. But if you go over to the inspector, to the light section, you can uh, and show the shadow properties and increase that quite a bit further if you want to. It does take more render time if you go up too high, but I'm gonna go up a little bit higher than that default amount, maybe something like that. Um, now. There are controls both in the heads-up display and the canvas for adjusting the light's position or rotation. The thing to know about a point light is it's essentially a light bulb. Mm -hmm. It's a single point source spreading out in all directions. And because of that, rotation is meaningless. Rotating a, just, a light bulb wouldn't just, do anything, yeah. right? Rotating wouldn't do anything. So in the canvas, all you can do is move it in X, Y, and Z. So I could move this down. Uh, I could move it behind the text. Using the Z? Yeah, using the little Z, Z arrow. arrow that's yeah. pointing at us. Move it down and create kind of a dramatic hidden uh, light hiding back there that uh, reveals the text and creates kind of a dramatic look. So some fun things you can do with a simple point light. I really think that looks cool. I think it looks great. I really uh, like there it as well. This, there was this title intro way back when the Untouchables, um, I mean, the title intro had light behind it and it threw shadows in front of the title. I thought. It, that's how yeah, they, that looks great. Pretty much exactly yeah. what it's doing there. And you can also colorize these lights. So I could change this to have um, some color in the scene nice. and do something even different. So some really dramatic things you can do with a point light. It's one of the, they're all useful, but I, I really like the point light. Uh, I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to add another new light. And for this light, instead of point, I'm going to choose to make a directional light. And I'll also enable shadows and crank up the softness a little bit. And at first, you don't see a darn thing. You might wonder, well, I'll crank up the intensity. I'm not going to worry about intensity. pointing at the wrong thing. So the way to think <laughs> about directional light as, a, as opposed to point light, directional light is more like sunlight. And sunlight is a point light, right. but it's 93 million miles away. Right. <laughs> right. So for all intents and purposes, its rays are parallel. Okay. okay? So a directional light is a parallel light. All the light rays are like arrows pointing in only one direction. So in that case, 
um, the position of it doesn't matter at all. All that matters is rotation. So it's exactly the opposite of a point light. Interesting. Yeah, so check this out. If I rotate it, I can point it down. See, it was pointing straight back ah, in space, but right. if I point it down. See, well, it did have to do a direction. Now we can see it. Well, it has rotation, but I know rotation is the only thing that matters. Oh, I see. Okay, but position, check it out. If I change its position, nothing's oh, going to change at all. So position means nothing. You can't move it in front of or behind an object. So when you're using a directional light, it doesn't matter where it is on the screen at all. The only thing that matters is the angle it's that it's pointing. It's what we call it as real. That would be called panning the light. Yes, and it has no effect on it because it's basically considered sunlight. Mm -hmm. um, that, that position is totally meaningless. You just focus on rotating it. And it can also create some dramatic looks because even though it's sitting here in front, you can assume it's making light in this direction from forever away. Right. Not from this location in space, but from you know a, a, an infinite distance away, perfectly a parallel light, and that also creates very interesting dramatic shadows. Yeah. Right. Um, in fact, we could combine them two and and combine them two, combine them two. Combine a point light and, and a directional light. Yeah. yeah. Now we've got a little bit of both going on. So I'll turn those off, and I'll add another one, new light, and now I'll select a spotlight. Spotlights are actually my favorite kind of light. They have the most control. And they look so like a cone. I'm going to increase the intensity again. I'm going to enable shadows and increase softness. So remember, uh, point lights were all position and no rotation. Mm -hmm. Directional lights were all rotation and no position. Mm -hmm. Spotlights let you do everything. Everything matters, position, rotation, and also the cone angle. So there's many different controls. So what I can do is point the spotlight down but I can also move it left or right, and all of that matters. It, it, think of this as a stage light. Right. And you can control how wide of a, an angle it throws. Mm -hmm. In fact, right in the heads-up display, we've got a cone angle, but we've also got a soft edge. And the way I like to use a spotlight is to take the cone angle. First, let me bring the soft edge down, so it's a hard edge. And then I'm going to bring the cone angle all the way to zero and increase the soft edge. And that gives me a really nice soft throw to the light. And again, this really matters where you put this, it has a dramatic impact on how it looks. So a spotlight kind of combines, in some ways, directional and point lights because it includes both rotation sure. and position. So um, that's kind of how that works. And then the last one, I'll keep that other one in there, is called an ambient light. So let's choose new light. And what an ambient light does, it adds light everywhere so there's no source at all so these other so ones this, like this it would be the default when you set up a yeah like when you set up a scene with no lighting, lighting that's ambient light ambient it's light is everywhere it doesn't have a source so why so, would you want to add another one yeah so why would you want to add it so one reason would be let me switch to ambient here and we can see it can add some overall light to a scene uh, okay so if you're all after you've added lights to a scene the overall scene brighten isn't the whole thing up yeah it'll yeah. brighten the whole thing up and by default way too much so i like to crank it way way down in like nine eight percent something like that just a little bit so something you, more than so zero. add a little bit more light into the background yeah there. it can lighten up a background so as a good example let me turn these off i actually have a um a set of lights in here that i can turn on so I've got a little bit of everything in here. And in fact, I've renamed them. I've got ambient light. I've got two spotlights, two point lights, and a directional light, just to get a sense of what's going on. And uh, if I turn the ambient light off, we can see it just gets a little dimmer. So just adding a little bit of overall light yeah. to, the, to the overall scene. The, the last thing I really wanted to show you was this. There's a, there's a particular parameter that can be confusing which is called the diameter of the light. And you might play with it and figure, well, what does this do? Diameter doesn't seem to do anything. The rest of you can figure out. And in order for us to see what that does, what I'm gonna do is turn on another camera that gives me a different angle here. Mm -hmm. That gives me a big close up over here. And I'm also gonna turn off these other lights just so we can really focus on what's happening right here with this guy. So, this light is causing reflection in this 3D object here. And it's really the reflection of the light that is the diameter. You won't see it affect what it's throwing light onto, but the reflection of the light itself. So if I drag this diameter slider, we can see the reflection of the light source itself in the 3D text. Mm -hmm. 
and that's what the diameter controls. So it can just create a, a kind of really interesting look to have some reflection that brings out the fact that this text has a material in it. And if I turn off that so camera, the different we'll go types of again. reflective surfaces would make a difference um, with that. Yes, control. they sure would, depending on if, they, if they're very reflective or not very reflective. But that's what the radius controls. So that's just a sort of a quick overview of the four light so types. Like a light primer. A light primer or light primer. I don't know how you say it. Potato, <laughs> potato. Um, but yeah, just to give an idea. We've and and net, you know, in in going over this, I realized there's actually a lot more information about lights. I'd really cut down how much would fit into a MacBreak Studio because there's a a great deal of depth because all the lights are animatable. And you can animate them with parameter behaviors and do some really interesting things, especially with spotlights sweeping across objects, lights moving to music, lights changing color to music. So I, I hear a yeah. new tutorial <laughs> coming on here. <laughs> There's some really fun, exciting things yeah. you can do, and not just with text on a plane like here, but adding in uh, graphics and video and other things. All right. Yeah. Fantastic. So thanks for. Um, Shedding some light on the light subjects. <laughs> Sorry, I had to do that. Um, so check us out at RippleTraining.com. Mark's got a full complement of motion tutorials that you definitely want to check out. He's like the best in the business when it comes to this particular uh, application. Uh, check us out on Facebook, YouTube, and uh, Twitter. And uh, look forward to seeing you next week on another episode of MacBreak Studio.